Hey folks, Scott Walters with the Bulletproof Garage. Hey, if you are anything like me, you get a little nervous when you crawl under a vehicle and there's nothing supporting that vehicle but some wobbly old Chinese made jack stands that are at the full limit of their height, all right? So I've got to stab a transmission in my 68 Le Mans convertible and I'm going to do something a little bit different, all right? I'm going to use these. This is cribbing or wheel stands, and we're gonna make four of them here and put them into use. So let's get started. Okay, folks, one thing I've gotta mention. Look, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not any sort of engineer. I just know that I've seen a lot of folks building and using these, all right? but I don't know what the safety parameters or limitations are, so please proceed with caution and at your own risk. So let's get going. Now, as far as supplies go, you need two things. You need some two by fours, all right? You need 15 two by fours, eight foot long, and I recommend you get the top quality, usually the number one grade or something similar. They're straighter, but more importantly, they won't have any large knots that affect the structural integrity of the two x four. In addition to the lumber, you're going to need something to secure it with. I prefer screws. You can use nails as well, of course. And my go-to is going to be a number nine or a number 10 construction screw. You can use interior grade or exterior grade. Um, this stuff is going to live inside, so I use interior grade, and these are two and a half inches long. You're gonna need about five pounds of those. And I prefer the ones with the Torx heads. All right, as far as tools, first and foremost, um, some safety gear, right? Um, wear some gloves, hearing protection, and eye protection. Next up, you need something to measure and mark the two by fours with, all right? So you're gonna need a measuring tape, a pencil, and I like to use a speed square. Speed square isn't required, uh, but it's a good piece of gear. All right, uh, for cutting the two by fours, I prefer to use a circular saw. You can also use a reciprocating saw. You can use a hand saw, whatever floats your boat. All right, then you need something to drive the screws with or drive the nails with. Um, I've got a battery powered drill and I've got the appropriate Torx bit for it. Um, the Torx bits generally come with the containers of screws. All right, next up is you're going to mark the two by fours every 16 inches. All right, so we're not building a space shuttle here, but I like to have nice clean cuts, all right? So I'm gonna use my speed square to keep my saw lined up. And you'll get six of these out of one eight foot two by four. Now you're gonna need to cut 14 of your two by fours into 16 inch lengths, all right? The leftovers you're going to want to make four inch blocks out of, and you're going to need a total of 10 four inch blocks per cribbing. So a total of 40 if you're doing four cribbings. All right, here's what you're gonna need to construct one. You're gonna need 20 two by four, 16 inch long, and you're going to need 10 two by four, four inch long, as well as obviously some screws. All right, and from here, you just lay things out like so. All right. You don't need any special tools here. You just need to get it squared up. Just eyeball it and you're fine. We're gonna do two screws per corner.
All right, from there, get two blocks, and you're just going to center them underneath here. Doesn't have to be perfect. And one screw is fine here. And then you just keep building up from there. Now you see where the wood blocks go, um, the four inch blocks, they go here and they go here on the other side, but we're not putting them here or here. And you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, folks, so here's the finished product. It's 16 inches square and 15 inches tall, and it weighs, I'm gonna say around 25, 30 pounds. I'll have to get you an exact weight, all right? Um, and again, we've got these two by four blocks, these four inches blocks, only um, on two sides. So we got them here, not here, here, and not here. That's because this is where the tire is going to be sitting, all right? The tire's gonna sit like so, and these blocks will help distribute the weight down to the ground. So if we didn't have these blocks, the weight of the tire sitting right here is going to load the corners more than it's going to load the ground, okay? So again, the intent of the blocks is if you've got the tire facing in this direction, all right, it helps distribute the load to the ground. Fair enough? Okay, now I think you can see what the issue is, right? So the frame rail on the Le Mans is about eight inches off the ground, all right? So this point right here is 26 inches off the ground. Hate doing public math, but that sounds to me like 18 inches 
I need to lift the frame rail so I can slide this under. Now, look, <laughs> I know what some of y'all are thinking. You're like, hey, just slide this on the ground underneath the car and then put it on top of the transmission jack once you get it under there, all right? Could I do that? Sure. <laughs> do I want to wrestle this Turbo 400 when I'm underneath the car? No. All right. So we're going to try to load it in as is, 26 inches under the frame rail. All right. Wish me luck. All right. Now for my next trick. <laughs> Figuring out how to get the Le Mans high enough to get the cribbing underneath the wheels. So. I went ahead and I bought a new jack. My old jack only lifted up to about 18 and a half inches. And this guy right here lifts uh, 23 plus. So that is a big difference. And I'm gonna need every inch of that. So yeah, it's a uh, Daytona three ton, but it is the long reach, low profile jack. The long reach is important. That's the one that gives you the extra lift height. Um, 240 bucks basically. Um, at Harbor Freight. So uh, seems to be well made, nice, nice and wide and sturdy. So I've already got the front lifted up and sitting on jack stands. So you wanna do this in stages. So let's get the back lifted up and on jack stands and then see how far we have to go. We may not have to put it on jack stands. We might just be able to put it on the cribbing. I'm really close right now. And I still got a little bit left to go. Yeah, we're going with the cribbing right now. All right, I just need about another inch there. All right, we've got one. And that's two, letting it down nice and slow. All right, now if we can just get the front up, we'll be good. All right, this is gonna be more difficult here um, and we're not gonna be able to make it with just the jack on the cross member because remember with independent front suspension, the front wheels are going to droop. Uh, in the back, obviously, we were lifting on the differential. So we'll get it up higher and then figure out how much more we gotta go. All right, I got one under. Let's see if the other one, the other one is close. Man, that is really close. All right, the jack is about at full extension. And I think that's it right there. So the jack is currently at full extension. I've got about, I don't know, a good two inches of clearance over there and I'm lacking a little clearance right here. So 
<sighs> Man, I'm gonna have to get a little creative. All right, if you can see what I did right there is I just sort of lifted up on the fender. I didn't have to put much effort behind it and it was uh, just slid right under. So I don't have to do anything super sketchy to get these under, all right? So that's good news. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it down and see how she's sitting. Let me just tap this under just a little bit. All right, <clears throat> and that's centered pretty much. Yeah, another tap. Make sure the other one's centered. All right, coming down. All right, current situation. It is on the cribbing and the cribbing didn't move, didn't grow, nothing cracked. Um, it is looking really steady and really stable. Um, I've got the jack that is still extended under the front cross member and I'm going to leave it there, all right? So I won't need that space. So that is just an extra safety measure. I've also got jack stands under the frame in the front and under the rear end in the back. These are six ton jack stands. Uh, I need to make sure that they are extended and positioned correctly before I get under the car. So if the cribbing fails, I've got the jack and the jack stands to back me up. Now the next problem though, is that we don't have enough room for the transmission to slide under there. So let's go ahead and get a measurement and see how much we're lacking. Okay, transmission, the top of the transmission, that's right at 26 inches. I leveled it out a little bit. It had been at 26 and a half, now we're at 26, but that's still not gonna be enough because I've only got 23 inches under the frame rail. So let's see how we can manage that. Yeah. I don't know any way to manage that um, without maybe taking the wheel off and moving the cribbing and then sliding it under here, uh, but I don't want to do that. So what I'll probably do is just go ahead and take the transmission off the jack and slide the transmission under the car first and then the jack and then put the transmission back on the jack under the car, which is not what I wanted to do, but it's doable. All right. So. I'm gonna call this an unmitigated success. And uh, yeah, glad we were able to do this without breaking anything else, without hurting anything or anybody. So um, something we didn't have to deal with is not being able to get the jack high enough. I was concerned about that. So I bought something called a jack saddle extension. Um, you can buy jacks that already have like metal extensions built into the saddle. Um, this is something I bought from that jungle site um, and it is a five and a half inch jack saddle extender. So uh, it's really made for a jack with a circular uh, saddle. Mine has sort of a um, square saddle, um, but this would have fit on the saddle. The problem with it, it, it is really slick. And man, I was worried about using this because it seems like the jack would have slid off of it. I'll also note that the jack manufacturer says in the instructions, don't put anything on the saddle except for whatever you're lifting. In other words, don't put this on the saddle. Don't put a four by four block on the saddle, which brings me to my next point. You know, I've done it in the past. I know that's what a lot of y'all out there do. You know, put a, put a block of wood on the uh, saddle and lift from there. Uh, luckily, we didn't have to go there on this occasion. But, uh, but if you're going to do that, folks, I, I don't recommend it, um, but please be careful. Okay, folks, before I sign off, I've got to give a shout out to the folks at the Garage Journal site at garagejournal.com and at Jalopy Journal uh, or the HAM for their input on how to use cribbing safely and effectively. Now, I have three requests for y'all, all right? Pretty simple. First, 
please hit the thumbs up button or the like button down below. Doesn't cost you a penny and it helps out the channel. Two, poke around on the channel a little bit. I've got several dozen videos up right now and I guarantee that you will find something else that you like. And three, and most importantly, post up a comment, all right? I want to hear how you would have done it. I want to also hear if I did anything incorrectly or if I did anything unsafe, all right? So this is really important. So please post up those comments, all right? I read each and every one of them and I really value the time that you take to post something up. Okay, folks, that's it. Signing off. We'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.